Welcome to Apostolic Life in the 21st Century, a podcast dedicated to helping modern day believers live out the teachings of the first century church. This podcast is part of the teaching ministry of Dr. David K. Bernard. Dr. Bernard has dedicated his life to studying the Bible and helping believers apply its message to their daily lives. In Apostolic Life in the 21st Century, Dr. Bernard answers your questions about what the Bible teaches and how those teachings apply to everyday life. Thank you for joining us for this broadcast. The Bible has a lot to say about death, of course. In Luke chapter 16, Jesus tells this parable of the rich man and a beggar called Lazarus. And in the parable, he indicates that Lazarus was in a place of peace and rest while the rich man was in hell. In in uh, the epistles, Paul, Second Corinthians chapter 5 specifically, Paul states that he would prefer to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. But then in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, he comes back and he indicates that dead believers are in a state of sleep and that they're going to be resurrected when Jesus returns. So all of this leads to the question, what exactly happens to us when we die? All right, let's take this in two parts. The first part is the story of the rich man and Lazarus that Jesus gave. Now, some debate whether it's a parable or an actual story because unlike other parables uh, that Lazarus is, Lazarus is named. But really, to me, that's not a crucial point because a parable is a true-to-life story. So it's meant to represent the reality that we're talking about. So let's just take that story as it is. What you find is Lazarus dies as a saved person, as a Jew under the Old Covenant, and he goes to a place of rest and peace, which is called Abraham's bosom. The rich man dies as a sinner, unsaved. He goes to a place of torment. But it's pictured as two compartments of this place. The Old Testament calls it in the Hebrew Sheol. The New Testament in Greek calls it Hades. Uh, The King James Version translates that word oftentimes by the word hell. But that's a little misleading in English because the word hell is also translated for the Greek Gehenna, which is the lake of fire, the two different places. And so we might translate it as the place of the dead. And so it appears that both the rich man and Lazarus are in the same place of the dead, but Lazarus is in a compartment, if you will, of rest and peace with the saints, and the rich man is in a place of torment or unrest, and he can see where Lazarus is, and at least he thinks that Lazarus might be able to visit him because he asked for that. And, of course, the answer is no, Lazarus cannot come to help you. Now, if that's a depiction of what it was like in the Old Testament, that would, uh, or at the time of Christ, which would be before the New Covenant is instituted, that would accord with the data we have from the Old Testament that people go to the place of the dead and they await um, the future. Now, I think the situation is a little different now because as of that story, You're still dealing with the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, even though it's in the Gospels. It's before the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. So it's before the New Covenant is instituted. Now think about this. We believe that the saved people of all the ages are saved by Jesus Christ, that no one could be saved by their works, that no one could be saved by animal sacrifices. Uh, The book of Hebrews says animal sacrifices were inadequate. They just pointed the way toward the true sacrifice. The true sacrifice is Jesus Christ. He, his sacrifice covers the sins of all the ages, of everybody who had faith in God and obeyed God's word and followed God's word for their day. They're saved through the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Since that true, that's true, then we understand that not all the benefits could be realized until Jesus actually died, was buried, rose again, paid the price, won the victory. So it appears that the Old Testament saints were in a place of waiting. They were not being punished. They were in a place of rest and peace, but they could not enter into their ultimate eternal destiny because they had to wait until Jesus paid the price. Now, we do find some interesting indications, and I cannot establish this as absolute dogma. There's there's more we don't know than what we do know. So in this explanation. I'm giving you my opinion. I think there's scriptural support, but many different people may have some different ways of looking at it. So I believe that 
during the time of Christ, the Old Testament saints were in this place of conscious rest. So when the Bible talks about sleep, their body is asleep. But uh, every human being has the inner component and the outward, uh, the spirit and the flesh. Some would further divide the inner component to soul and spirit. But be that as it may, they're closely aligned so that we can say, Maybe we could say that the soul is the human consciousness, the spirit is the God consciousness, but we look at that as a whole. So the inner person, the soul slash spirit, the inner, that's the true person. So the body is in the grave decaying, and so it's sleeping. But the inner person is still conscious and awaiting. So in the Old Testament times and the time of Christ, they were awaiting the resurrection. They are waiting deliverance. But in Ephesians 4, we have this interesting statement that when Jesus Christ was incarnate, he came down this world and even says he went to the lower parts of the earth and he led captivity captive. Then 1 Peter chapter 3 talks about Christ preaching unto the souls who are dead. It's not the Greek word for evangelism or preaching the gospel to the lost, but it's the Greek word keruso, meaning proclamation. So it appears to me, and then also you have Acts chapter 2, which quotes from Psalm 16, that when Jesus died, his soul was not left in hell, Sheol, Hades. In other words, his soul did not descend to the dead and remain there, but he was resurrected. His body did not decay. His soul did not stay in the place of the dead, but was, he was resurrected and he ascended to heaven. So putting all those together, Jesus was a true human like us in every way except for sin. So whatever our experience of death is, he experienced that. So not only did his body go to the grave, but his inner person, his soul, spirit, went to the place of the dead, wherever that is. But what seems to be different, when Jesus went to that place, he took the Old Testament saints, which would include Abraham and Lazarus, and the thief on the cross. And he said, you'll see me today in paradise. Paradise being another term for Abraham's bosom or the compartment within Hades where the righteous souls were. So it appears that when Jesus died, his soul went into the place of the dead, but he gathered all the righteous souls, as I said, including Abraham, Lazarus, the thief who had just died, who believed in him, he took all of them from this place of Abraham's bosom or paradise, the compartment of Hades or Sheol, where the righteous were, and he brought them into the presence of God. So that was the benefit, one of the benefits of the atonement. So now Paul doesn't talk about, I'm going to Abraham's bosom when I die, or I'm going to paradise, or I'm going to the place of the dead and wait and I'll be asleep. He says, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And to the Philippians, he said, you know, I'm I'm torn. I want to be with you and help you, but I'd rather be with Christ, which is far better. So Paul, as after the resurrection of Jesus, under the new covenant, doesn't seem to be just thinking of a nice place of rest. He's looking at being in God's presence. So I do think there has been a difference after the resurrection of Jesus, that now when Christians die... Their body still goes to the grave. In that sense, we can speak of sleep. But their soul, spirit, their inner person, their consciousness goes into the presence of the Lord. And we typically use the word heaven. And again, like the word hell, it it can mean different things. The word heaven, at its most fundamental, means wherever God is. Now, I do believe there's going to be a, a place of heaven. But right now... The best I can say, our bodies go to the grave, which could still be called um, Hades in a sense, maybe, but it's the grave. And our spirit, soul, inner consciousness goes in the presence of God to await the resurrection. We're conscious, but we're waiting because it's our salvation is not complete. But then when Jesus Christ comes back for his church, the dead will be raised, the dead in Christ will be resurrected with a glorified body. The souls will be reunited with their bodies in a glorified, immortal body. And then we will live in the presence of God forever in a real place called heaven. We'll be where Jesus is in his glorified human body. We'll be with him for eternity. So we're still awaiting the resurrection. But as 
The dead in Christ await the resurrection. I believe they're in a conscious place of rest in the presence of the Lord. Thank you for joining us for today's broadcast. We hope you'll make plans to join us again next time when once again we take a look at how the Bible applies to our everyday lives.